Hello and welcome to my review of Doctor Who Season 12 Episode 4, Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. Now if this looks like my previous few videos, it's because I'm recording it at the exact same day, wearing the exact same clothes, in the exact same location. But anyway, what is different is the episode I'm talking about. And thank God, because like I said last video, I didn't mind Orphan 55, which is episode 3, but episode 4 blows that out of the water and it's a really, really, really good episode. What worked for me? Well, the guest stars really worked for me. I thought the two actors playing uh, Nicola Tessa and Thomas Edison were excellent. I thought Nicola Tesla's assistant was also excellent. I thought that the, uh, the villains slash monsters, when, you know, they, they had the possessed reanimated humans, and then they had uh, Anjali Mahindra, who was in Sarah Jane Adventures, playing the queen, um, scorpion. I've forgotten the, uh, creature's names. It's weird, but I forget all the creature's names this season. But anyway, Scythra, I think, playing the queen of the Scythra. Um, they were really cool, and she did a really good job. And the makeup was really cool. Um, there were some funny humorous moments with her, where she, uh, killed one of her, her, uh, assistants, and, because he was giving an explanation when she was asked a question, and she goes, I was talking. Anyway, here's the same answer he just gave. I thought that was kind of fun. Oh, by the way, spoilers throughout this, just just so you know. Um, I thought it looked great. This whole era has looked amazing. The cameras, the cinematographers, the post-production that they're doing, the CGI has all been really good this era. And this episode is no exception. It looks really, really nice. Um, Sagan Akinola's music was lovely throughout this. Nikola Tesla had a theme which was gorgeous and it played at the start. There's a bit of a cello solo going on with a few other members of the orchestra accompanying it. Really good stuff, really beautiful music. Um, really good versions of the action theme. Actually, I didn't mention that in my previous reviews, but there's an action theme introduced in Resolution. And then there was another take on it a year later in Spyfall Part 1, which was like a James Bond version of it. And then here in uh, Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror, we had another one, another version of it. And it sounds really cool. And it's kind of reminded me of Season 3 of New Who, where you had The Doctor Forever, which was... Murray Gold's theme for the 10th Doctor at that point in time. Then you also had all the strange, strange creatures. And so I, I don't mind that the Doctor's theme isn't necessarily the action piece, whereas I Am the Doctor was used as kind of like the, the uh, heroic action piece, as well as some of the quieter moments. Um, by the way, if you don't know, I am a huge score fan, like TV soundtrack, TV and movies, music so I will go on and on about them in my reviews. And uh, Sagan Akinola has been doing a really, really good job. I like the Doctor's theme, which we heard a lot last year. A little less this year, but that's because of this action theme. As I'm branding it, it's not really called that, I'm sure. But it happens during the high-paced runny bits, which happens a lot in Doctor Who. There are often bits where people run and a lot of the stakes are high and it's adventurous. And so that's been happening a lot this season. And it's a really cool theme, really good... Um, notes played and uh, nice little variations on it throughout all these different episodes. I really like it. Same with the TARDIS theme. It's a really nice theme. And like I said earlier, Nikola Tesla had a theme in this episode, which is a really nice piece of music. Really liked it. I am a little bit put off by his approach to scoring scenes when villains appears and monsters. Actually, mainly monsters. I actually really liked the Tim Shaw theme he came up with from last year. It was quite atmospheric, quite good. Now it feels a bit... I guess I want to say over the top. Yeah, it, it feels a little bit over the top. It feels a lot of um, high-pitched notes on violins. That's my miming of a violin, which is probably terrible and not at all how you hold it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> now you mash up it straight to back. You hold the bow further down there like that. Never mind. I don't play the violin. Um, but it's just, it sounds a little bit, I don't want to say messy because that sounds like an insult, but it's just, it's laid on a bit thick for me. But it's just a stylistic approach, and I'm sure it works. Well, it does. It sets you on edge, but it just doesn't sound as great as some other things that even he's done. I was going to point at Murray Gold, the other New Who composer, but even Sagan Akinola has done better work for tense moments where the villains turn up uh, it last year, I think. But that's that's just how I'm viewing it. That's my opinion. I think he's done a really good job. I was obsessed with Murray Gold for years. Uh, he's one of my favourite composers ever, Murray Gold. But Sagan Akinola is doing a really good job with his new era. But now I think I might turn on to some things that I didn't quite enjoy. Uh, I'm not a fan of dumbing down characters in order to explain the plot, and that's exactly what happened with all three of the companions in this episode. 
Uh, they didn't know who Tesla was, which gave the Doctor an opportunity to explain it. I would have almost been okay with that if it was just Yaz and Ryan. And Graham knew about it, so it was the Doctor and Graham explaining things. And maybe Graham could have said a common misconception about him and the Doctor corrected him. But at least Graham should have known about Tesla, I think. Because most people do. Surely most people do anyway. So that was a little bit disappointing. It was dumbing down the characters for the sake of the story, for the sake of explaining possibly to the younger viewers who don't know who Tesla is, who he is. And for me, that's a little bit annoying just for the sake of doing that. Um, I was also a bit confused. Now, I might have missed this, although I've seen it twice. Why was there not enough power to power the shields around where they were to keep the, the monsters out, the scorpions, the giant scorpions, uh, and power the tower at the same time? I'm confused because they took it into the TARDIS, hooked it up to the TARDIS. Surely the TARDIS has enough power to do both. Now, I wouldn't have minded it if they said, with the shield up, the signal can't be projected um, the way we wanted it to be so we can't damage the ship. That would have explained that perfectly well. But that's not what they said. The Doctor said there's not enough power to power both. Huh? <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was a bit convenient and a bit annoying. But other than that, those two niggles I have, they're quite big, but they don't ruin the episode for me. It's still really well made, really well directed, really well acted from all concerned, even if yet again the main characters, the main companions are let down. But that did let the Doctor shine. And there were great moments, such as uh, when she realised that she can go and see Nikola Tesla's lab, and this happens. I won't lie. I was expecting more. Hmm. Well, let's have a look about. And then later on when they're in Edison's, a little bit of a payoff kind of reference jokey reference back to that, we have this. This is your chemical lab. Perfect. And I just love the expression on Jodie Whittaker's face both times. It was, it was kind of cute, kind of fun. Very Doctor-ish, I thought. So overall, really enjoyed this episode. Much better than last week's, but also I enjoyed it in its own right. It's a really good episode. Um, I'm looking forward to the next one, even though I'm not too keen on the fact that the name of the episode and the trailers have spoiled who the main, it appears to be, antagonist is in the episode. But knowing who they are, and I'm not going to say anything more than that in case you guys don't know, uh, they don't always turn out to be the bad guys when they previously appeared, so maybe they're not. But I'm not too keen that I know this going in. I'm a bit of a spoilerphobe. I risk watching trailers, but that's about it. And I'm disappointed that this trailer and the episode title gives away who's in it. But I bet there's a twist where they're not the actual bad guys. But I'll leave it at that. And I'll say thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like. Please leave a comment. By the way, a friendly comment. Nothing, you know, insulting any of the Doctor Who cast and crew. Nothing insulting me for having possibly differing opinions to you. If you didn't like it, say that you didn't like it. Say why you didn't like it. Don't insult people. Don't call for them to be fired. Because that's not going to work. They'll leave when they leave. That's just the policy I have. Be civil. Discuss it. Criticise it. Creatively. That's not the word. What is it? Anyway, constructive, it began with a C. Constructive criticism only, please. I've got there in the end. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Hopefully after the next episode. Or maybe I'll have to do a catch up one and talk about multiple episodes, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you then. <laughs>